Turn it off, please, Carol. Woo! I'll do it. <laughs> We're back. Calm, collected, and uh, ready for action. So, did you miss us? Uh, we missed you. Oh, we missed you. We did. We were going uh, slowly crazy, but we did need a little bit of a break. Um, I'll tell you a bit more about that in a minute. We did a bit of planning, didn't we, Carol? <laughs> Carol, Carol got her sharp pointy stick up and held me in a corner for quite some time. For about three minutes. So we'll tell you about that at the end. But um, as you know, it's Workshop Wednesday, so we're going to do a live demo um, like we do every Workshop Wednesday. And um, we're also live on Saturdays as well, 1pm, that's our time. So today, what I thought was I'd show you... Um, how to, well, we're laminating up Roland's neck. So this, these are the, the pieces that I'm gonna to glue together for um, Roland's neck laminate. And that's for his, his guitar here that I'm making. This is a custom guitar. So yeah, having a couple of weeks off um, gave me a bit of a chance to catch up with some other stuff. Um, you know, boring stuff that has to be done that doesn't include making guitars or making films. So, um, yeah, I appreciate you uh, being patient with us and giving us a bit of slack there. Um, but we're back at it now, and we'll be roaring right up until Christmas, <laughs> if Christmas isn't cancelled, eh? So, um, yeah. Um, so whatever's going on in the world, whatever mayhem and chaos is going on, we'll always be here every Wednesday and Saturday. I guarantee you more is it. <laughs> yeah, add into it. <laughs> add into the chaos. Mm. So I'm making a neck for Roland's guitar. This is a custom guitar that I've been making for him. Woohoo! Um, hopefully he'll appear at some point in the comments. Um, He's here. But... He's watching. Oh, hey, Roland. So, um, yeah, so also we're going to show you these neck laminates and I'll take you through that process in a minute. That's going to be my demo, but I also want to show you um, Here's Roland's fretboard and some dots that I've been working on. So if you're there, Roland, you can help us choose. Well, you can choose your, the, the dots you want. Um, we'll, get, we'll get those out and um, talk about them in a minute. Um, and we've got some other sort of site news, bits and bobs going on on the Guitar Making Academy um, that I'll tell you about at the end as well. So I'm just going to start by cracking on with the demo and then we'll do some talky bits and do any questions and answers at the, end. at the end. Do you want yeah, if you've got any questions, write them in the comments and Carol, um, Carol will either shout them out or put them up on the screen, whatever she decides to do. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, one thing I don't do very often is say uh, thank you to Carol over there operating the, 
master controls. Um, so yeah, we do appreciate you. We've all missed you, haven't we, folks? Everybody tell Carol in the comments how much we've missed her. So I'm going to show you what we started with then. Now we did have a bit of deliberation with Roland's neck. Um, it's a custom build, so uh, so Roland can pretty much choose whatever he wants. And um, he actually came, supplied me with some wood to build this guitar from, including the 400 year old spectacular piece of walnut. Can't wait till it's glossed, wait till it's glossed. That's gonna look spectacular. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute as well. So um, he originally supplied me with a piece of green heart, which I've temporarily misplaced. We didn't burn it. This was going to be the neck, but unfortunately it's, it's too heavy. It's got shakes in it. It's got little splits in it inside and we're not sure how deep they go. So I didn't want to risk making a neck out of this. Um, and it was a bit damp. And also the moisture content is off the charts. Where, is it, where had it been? Oh, it's been underwater. Where had it been? It's a lock. It's, the, it's from a gate. Yeah, it's from the gates of a lock. lock. So Greenheart, I did a bit of research on it and um, nobody seems to like it very much, especially for making guitar necks. So we decided to um, abandon that. We're going to do something else with that. Um, might even use it for some inlays, but we'll talk about that in a minute. And um, I dug out a rather special piece of um, baked maple. I'm not sure if the flames will show up in the on the camera. Mm -hmm. um, it's really highly figured, beautiful piece of maple. And um, until they event smelly vision. Oh yeah, you can see it now. Oh, you'll just have to take my word for it. How beautiful this smells. You guys just talk amongst yourselves for a bit. Um, Mark Rowland says that the oh, it's lovely. The wood was submerged for 150 years. Yeah. So we abandoned in favour of this piece of brown maple. Um, but Rowland also supplied some um, satin wood, beautiful piece of satin wood, which we used to make the fretboard. And luckily there was enough left over to use it as some laminates down the middle of the neck. So we've got baked maple, satin wood, and what I've added is some pin stripes. So that's in particular what, it, what I wanted to talk to you about today. Um, just a little trick to make it easier for you um, and for me. So this, if you count the pieces, nine pieces of wood there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's counting the, um, the black pinstripes. Um, so to make it easy for yourself, what I've done is I've pre-glued some of it. So here we go. Here's the satin wood and I've pre-glued some black strips on. I did that yesterday and, um, and I filmed it so, um, so I could show it to you guys. So it's a little minute long clip and I did it in time lapse so it's super fast. So Carol, if you can get that little film ready, um, ready to play, um, I'll just show you the, how this is going to go. So that's the, the baked maple and I just chopped some strips off. Um, so here's my strips, not chopped off the end. One, two, three. Um, started with a piece of satin wood, added the, um, the black veneer. So this is just black veneer. Everybody always asks me what kind of wood is it and to be honest um, I don't actually know. <laughs> I think it's probably something cheap like boxwood or um, poplar and it's pressure dyed so the dye goes all the way through. This kind of thing is available in all sorts of different colours. Um, I've also got maple and mahogany, so um, different colours, but it, it's also dyed different colours. So this is, it, it's not ebony, um, it's actually black. Um, we don't use ebony for this kind of purpose because, believe it or not, it's not the most stable wood in the world. So it's not ideal for using in your neck laminates. And also it's, it would be you know, through the roof expensive 
to do this in ebony um, are very, very wasteful. So many reasons we don't do it. Um, this kind of uh, veneer is, is excellent for that. It's a lot cheaper than ebony. Roland said, cheap? <laughs> Less expensive. Yeah, it's, no, it's not a fancy wood is what I'm talking about. And it's available in lots of different colours, so you can make all kind of fancy laminates. Um, but it's only less than a millimetre thick. It's usually 0.6 of a mil thick. So if you queue up the film, Carol, this little film here will just show you how, um, how I did that yesterday. And then we'll come back and I'm going to actually live on the internet with no safety net. I'm going to glue the rest of Roland's laminates up. Um, and then uh, in, on future live streams, you'll see me doing more work on, on this neck. Um, and at some point we're going to be spraying it and finishing it and it's going to become part of the finishing course so yes finishing course i've mentioned it i've said it now it's going to happen we're going to talk about that in a minute so um if you play the film carol i'm just going to show you guys now how how i made these little uh i've pre-laminated the satin wood with the black veneers to make it easier to do the overall neck laminate Okay, so that's the first little tip. So, yeah, if, if you just hit the space bar, Carol. No, you've got, to, you've got to select it. No. GM video. There it is, look, space bar. So, um... Obviously it's time lapse, so it's a bit fast. I left it for an hour to dry, and then this is the second one being done. So I wanted to pause it at some point just to show you the amount of glue that I put on. There you go. And it goes back to the time lapse. And I clamped it down to the table like that. And that helps to keep it flat. So I've got um, the piece underneath is perfectly flat. A nice big flat thing and a nice flat piece of wood clamped down on top. And I've tried to use just the right amount of glue so there's minimum squeeze out and um, <clears throat> keep it all nice and clean and tidy. You'll have to press pull, Carol. Keep it all nice and clean and tidy so that the glue doesn't go everywhere and didn't want to end up gluing it down to my bench. So let's just play it again. If manage it we'll just obviously we've slowed it down normally I work a lot faster than this so there you go left it for an hour to dry and then I did the second one here's the second one coming up so in this case, what I did was I put the glue on the satin wood and then I put the black bit on top and then turned it over and did the second piece. So sometimes to make it easier for yourself, it's just the, the order you do things can be really important. So that's it if you um, pull. Pull me off, Carol. Highly technical all this is. So, that was how I made these yesterday. And all I did was this morning, I just trimmed off the excess with a blade. And then what I also do before I glue each piece, is I give it a little scrape with a blade. And we make sure our bench is perfectly clean because when we're gluing, we don't want dust in the way. So I'll blow that out of the way. Let's get rid of all the stuff that we're not using anymore. Let's do questions then before I do the actual, um, before I do the actual glue in. It's a great question. Go on then. Uh, Rock and Roller 912 says, are there any advantages to a laminate neck or is it just decorative? Fantastic question. 
so glad you're here um, for that. Yes, the advantage of a, of a laminated neck, um, any piece of wood is prone to move in or warp in. Um, imagine wood is like a sponge and as it takes on moisture from the air, if, you, if you're in a damp environment, it will soak in water from the air or if it's in a dry environment, water will evaporate um, from the piece of wood into the air. Um, when that happens, because wood doesn't necessarily grow in perfect straight lines, um, there are certain there are little tensions built into the wood and one side might dry out more than the other. You might end up with um, warping or cupping. Um, generally speaking, when you are storing wood, um, you want to store it so that wood, uh, air can get all the way around. I'll just show you this as the subjects come up. This is a piece of wood that um, somebody's bought and sent here for me to join up for them. I don't check. Can you actually see that? Yeah. So can you see I've, I've stacked it up on top of two pieces of wood here with a gap underneath and then there's another gap so air can move freely all the way around. When you do that then it's much 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 less likely to, um, to warp. Um, but even so, whatever you do, um, there, is, there is always a chance that your piece of wood is going to move. Um, and so if it's one great big lump of wood, then it's going to move one way, for instance. Well, if you just chop that piece of wood in half and turn one of them, then if it moves, then it moves against itself. You see what I mean? and it will actually hold itself straight. Even if you don't turn one of the pieces of wood, just the act of cutting it and joining it will fix it in position and make it a lot more stable and less likely to move. And the more laminates you put in, the more stable it's gonna be. And it also makes it stiffer at the same time. So whenever you, whenever you join two pieces of wood, it's gonna be stiffer than if you just had one piece. And stiffness equals sustain. So um, all things being equal, um, you want your neck to be as, as stiff and light as possible. So laminating your neck is, has the advantages of being um, a super stiff and super strong. Another question? Well, it's, it's a lot. There's a few, but this one's a perfect time of this. So Eddie Cameron's in the house and he said, can you laminate curves or wavy lines? Would it be stable? Well, now you're talking about um, at the bag press. So if you're laminating um, any kind of odd shapes, like for instance, um, guitar, acoustic guitar sides can be laminated. But then you just use, um, for example, five layers of veneer glued together over a mould. And the only way to clamp that kind of thing down is to use a vacuum press. So it's like a bag press. And we have done a whole course on using the bag press for making guitars. And um, that's available free on YouTube, but it's also on the, on the site, um, using the bag press for making guitars, I think it's called. Um, so if you're interested in that kind of thing, then definitely check that out. Um, yeah, so if you're trying to laminate strange shapes, then something like a bag press will help. Um, vacuum press is what you need. You said, would it be stable? Yeah, it would certainly be stable, for sure. Obviously, um, always do a test. Whatever it is you're doing, you would always do a test, um, just to make sure. Don't just take my word for it, because I was wrong once. So here, what I'm going to do then, is I'm going to go ahead and glue this, and then we'll do some more questions at the end. Um, so I've got my nine pieces are now narrowed down to one, two, <coughs> three, four, five pieces. Um, five pieces, one, two, three, four, five, makes it a lot easier than um, fighting with nine pieces. But it's still a bit tricky, so um, the order you do it can be really important. 
To make it easy for myself, what I'm going to do is leave this middle one in position and I'm going to put glue on this one and this one and then I'm going to fold it up like that, stick them together. Then I'm going to put glue on this one and this one and fold them up and um, just to be sure, I've already marked on the edge my numbers so I know, I know where they're going just in case I get mixed up it's always a good idea to mark them so there we go um, and also earlier on before you guys all got here I did a dry clamp so I've got I've got a block for each side and I've got all my clamps here um, already lined up ready to go brilliant so let's do it I'm going to fold Fold these down. Glue on these bits. All I need is my spreader. Oh, there it is. So let's go for it. Again, I don't want to put masses of glue on. I want to put just the right amount on. I know I forgot to show you, but what I did earlier Let's get a blade. I just got a blade and just gently scraped off any excess glue that was on there. Um, and I also scrape every glue joint gets um, scraped gently with a blade just to remove any uh, glue or sanding scratches that are there. Um, when, when you scrape the glue joint, you get a lot stronger joint. Can I, this is an appropriate question for now. There's two actually that are really appropriate. Is grain direction an issue? Yes, grain direction. Um, that's also one of the reasons we laminate. So, um, good call. Let me show you. Um, if you can see the grain, the end grain on this is vertical. Back a bit. Can't really see it, can you? No. I'll draw it on. But I've cut these so that the grain is as close to vertical as possible, like this. See that, Carol? Uh, no, there, that's it. Back so the grain thing. is vertical like this. And the fretboard would go on this face. Right. Again, when you're gluing, you don't want to hang about. But you don't need to do a mad rush. It's best if you don't stop to explain stuff halfway through, but that's all right, ask away anyway. And I'm, I might have to stop to. Well, actually, um, Pete Coates has been doing this and he said, Is there any way of preventing the, the neck laminates from moving about when you're gluing? Brilliant question. Yes, there is. I'll show you. Um, one thing you might notice is that I've tried to make my pieces um, the same height, the same thickness this way. That makes it easier and I'll show you why in a second. Um, that'll come up in a minute, Carol, in the demo. I'll show you as we go, I'll show you that. Bit of glue. Is camera three not working, Carol? No. That's our close up cam. Just the right amount of glue there. Any good? Right, let's get a close up then. I don't want to hang about too long because you don't want um, you don't want your glue to start drying. So that's about how much glue you end up with. 
what I like to do is use my tooth spreader because um, it, it's very good for taking off the excess glue and it leaves just the right amount. Just like that. See how it takes off the excess glue and just leaves, um, it leaves these strange looking peaks. But when you, um, when you put that onto your uh, piece of wood, they all flatten out and spread out and you end up with a perfect even film. So we'll just squeeze that on. Beautiful. Try and make sure they line up at this end. Yeah, roughly. Okay, and someone was asking about how to stop it moving about while you've got the glue on. Mm -hmm. So of course, everything behaves, um, everything behaves really well while it's dry. You get everything clamped up and you do your dry run. Um, did I mention that? I always dry clamp. So before you guys got here, I had a practice run. So I know I've got my clamps ready. Um, Okay, there's a couple of tricks. One trick is, don't rush. You'll notice that I'm taking my time. And that gives the glue a chance to grab. So this, what I'm using, by the way, is tight bond yellow glue. Um, any glue will do. You can use white glue, it just takes longer to dry. You can use any glue for guitar making. Um, but yellow glue dries really fast. Um, and it's got what we call fast grab. So within just a couple of minutes, it'll start to what we call grab and it won't slide about quite so much, quite so badly. So that's one tip is don't rush, take your time. And then here's another tip. You've got to be real careful as you put your clamps on. Um, because these clamps are kind of, they've got cams on, so they turn. So they have a twist in motion and they tend to transfer that into whatever you're clamping. Having a, a block there, that's obviously protecting the wood, but it also um, takes out a little bit of the twisting motion of the clamp. So um, one thing you can do is get sort of like a spring clamp or something like this first, and just put that on just to hold it. This one's not big enough. So I might decide to use something like this. The advantage of this sort of clamp is it pushes straight rather than there's no turning motion. So these can be good for at least getting the first clamp on. Um, what you'll find is once you've got two clamps on that it won't move anymore. But it's just getting those first two clamps on without it moving. So a clamp that doesn't twist will help. Um, a pushy clamp rather than a twisty clamp helps. And an also what helps is if you rest the back of the clamp down and then you can just put, put it into position, I'm going to do it in the middle, put it into position and then squeeze. Now if it does move, I've got another trick I can show you. Another little trick. You can use another clamp. I mentioned earlier about making these all roughly that the same height. That's so that you can put a clamp on the top. So let's try. Uh, let's try that camera there. If we just move it a bit. We can. Uh, what we can do is actually put a clamp on there to hold them down. Um, again, I, I, I'm clamping down onto this piece of um, plastic here, this piece of black plastic, which the glue won't stick to that. If you haven't got anything like that, then um, just use a piece of scrap wood, but put some wax on it. Wax the piece of wood and then the, the glue won't stick to it. So this is one thing you can do, put a clamp on, um, something like that, and that will hold it down whilst you put the rest of the clamps on. So I've hung about talking a bit too long really, I need to get these clamps on now. So don't interrupt me for a minute. What I'm gonna do is just put them on gently. 
Um, another mistake people make is over tightening the clamps. Um, you just need to nip them up just so they're just holding and then it's less likely to um, slide about all over the place. So just minimum pressure. So once you've got two clamps on it, it shouldn't move anywhere, but keep an eye on it. And I could put another clamp on there if I wanted. Um, might need to put a block on it. You could put some kind of block on, just to hold it all flat like that. I'd only do this if it was, you know, if it was becoming a problem because it's nice to be able to see what's, what's actually going on. So these clamps are just on loose, they're not tight, they're just nipping up. What we do is we get them all on first and then, then you can have a visual check. Does it all look good? It does all look good. So I'm going to go ahead and um, tighten the clamps. Again, just keeping an eye on it and nipping them up a little bit at a time, one at a time. So the, the mistakes most people make are they hoif up the first clamp too tight, the twist in motion starts it moving and then it goes downhill from there. Um, so hopefully just take your time, nip them up a little bit at a time and that, that whole thing took what, four or five minutes, if that, and that's it done. Um, and it's not going to move anywhere now. We can take the end clamps off and have a look at the back just to make sure that it's reasonably flat and then um, it's less likely to glue down to the bench as well. So let's have a look what it looks like on the back. Close enough for rock and roll. Beautiful. Now. So it's not perfect, it's still, um, it's not absolutely perfectly level, but it's close enough. Um, so that will go through my um, sander and come out perfectly flat. Um, so basically that gets planed or sanded flat now, um, and I've got machines for that. You're not likely to have these kind of machines in, in your garage or shed, unfortunately. Which is, which is why um, on the site, guitar making site, we actually supply um, neck and body blanks that are ready to work on. Um, if you want a laminated blank like this, then get in touch with us. These aren't actually on site because there's so many different options. Um, we could fill up the whole website just with different options of laminates. Um, so we tend to supply a um, Standard neck blank, which is mahogany, is, is what I recommend. We also do maple ones, but that's a bit harder work. For your first guitar, I would certainly recommend that you use just um, one piece mahogany um, to make it easy on yourself. And also, mahogany sounds, it's the best sound in wood. So on our website, on the Guitar Making Academy, we will supply you with a neck blank looks kind of like that it's ready to work on okay i've done a little bit of work on that one but we won't mention that that's what your neck blank will look like if you order it from us and we also do supply a full kit where which is the neck body um and you get a pre-made fretboard that's the only bit that's pre-made and um and all the bits and bobs you need to make a guitar um Recently, we were visited by uh, one of our students, um, Robin, who, who bought a kit off us and came to collect it. Um, I'm going to show you some pictures from that in a sec. Um, so we've got some questions first. Yes, please. Right, so Pete Coates was asking about uh, the gluing. Yep. Then you went on to talk about machines. So he, what, he wants, what he's asked is, if you haven't got all the machines, what, what can you do if you haven't got all the machines that you... If you haven't got all the machines, your best bet is to... What I was trying to get at was just make a one-piece neck. Is your best bet, obviously. If you're determined to make a laminate neck, then 
and your best bet is to buy a machine <laughs> you need to really if you're going to do this more than once like if you're going to do it for a living you really need to look into getting some serious machines when i say serious machines the tools i've got in here they're all hobby standard nothing i've got in here is industrial i've got like a dewalt um, planer over there which anybody can go and buy and i've got the performax 16 to 32 sander um, if you want to know more about tools i wasn't going to go into all tools today but if you want to know more about tools i've actually made a video on that and i did a little ebook where i show, show you all the tools that i use and recommend for your first build um, but to avoid spending all that money on machines just buy pre-made blanks and if you know exactly what you want then you can contact us and say will you make me um, a laminated neck with maple um, purple heart and maple tell me what you want and I'll do it for you we'll give you a price quote your price and we'll do it um, but for the most part I would stick with the standard especially if you're a beginner at this um, just stay with the standard I've very carefully chosen um, for the kit, the basic kit, what I think is um, the best stroke, easiest combination of bits and bobs to make um, a fantastic guitar, something like this actually. Um, but you can customise it to your heart's content. Use whatever pickups you want and hardware. So we've still got some questions. Amazing. Yeah. Let's do People are picking on particular issues. Okay. So, um, first one is from I think it's Rock and Roller Nine One Two. Um, does make having a laminate neck affect truss rod action at all? Is there any impact on the truss rod action? Not really. No. Only that you might not need to adjust it so much because the neck will be a little bit stiffer. Um, that's all else being equal. Like if you used um, a one-piece mahogany neck. If you had two identical pieces, you laminated one and left the other, the laminated one would be stiffer. Purists, on the other hand, would prefer a one-piece neck. So this is all down, a lot of it is down to personal taste as well. Um, there are no rights or wrongs when it comes to guitar making. <laughs> as you'll see if you look around the internet. <laughs> right, I've still got some more. Go on, more questions. So another issue, and then we'll come back to this thing about... Right, so uh, the, the next issue, I think this is Eddie Cameron. He said, if you're making a laminate neck and then you're going to scarf joint it, are there any issues there? Are there any issues for scarfing? Yeah, it's a lot more difficult because you want to try and line up the laminates. Apart from that, it's exactly the same. Um, I have done it myself. It's not recommended, especially for the beginner, but you can do a scarf neck with a laminate. Sure, yeah. Um, it does make lining up that scarf critical though, because if you miss, everyone can see it. <laughs> so make sure you get it properly lined up. Um, you can use exactly the same method that I, that I describe in my video on scarf neck. So if you want to do it, um, obviously you use a lot thinner wood than this, um, but you can do it, yeah, sure. And you can use the same video that I made on scarf necks if you search the channel for that you'll find that um so whilst we're here the uh brilliant questions by the way okay, thank you folks um oh, right so uh super clunk yeah clint over in hawaii said that he used a router to um when he was using made a, a laminate ukulele, ukulele neck he used a router to, to level yes uh that is that's one trick you can do. Um, there are ways to set up a router for thickness in wood. Yeah, sure. Um, and you can also use, um, I, I don't like doing it myself. Obviously I'm spoiled. I've got big tools that are specially made for doing that. But there's a- th But you didn't always. I didn't always, no. I used to actually do it all by hand with a hand planer. That's doing, really doing it the hard way. A hand planer and a sanding block and a scraper. Um, that's really doing it the hard way though. Um, I try not to recommend anything that's too difficult because <laughs> I'm trying not to put you off. Um, guitar making's 
can be as difficult as you want it to be. You know, you can really make it hard for yourself. As I said before, um, I've got another guitar making friend, um, my friend Rob Williams, way down south. He always used to say that you could make a guitar with a screwdriver, <laughs> but it's just a lot harder and it's going to take a lot longer. So I try and all my methods all come from a background of having no money, hardly any tools, and just trying to come up with the best ways to do things without spending a fortune. So um, laminating a neck is, <laughs> doesn't come under that category. Laminate, laminating a neck like this is a bit special and something that we normally reserve for custom builds. So um, uh, the, I think the final one for that is Ra Raoul over in New Zealand said he's made friends with a furniture maker who, uh, for a small fee, thought, you know, does his wood for him. Fantastic, yeah. So that's my advice. If you buy the ebook on tools is what I say. If, um, beg, borrow, but don't steal. If you put the word out there that you, you need a router or you'll make, you want to make guitars and you need tools, you'd be amazed what people will give you. Um, Lendio, or even just lend yeah. Um, people buy stuff all the time and they use it once and put it in their shed and they never use it again. So there's blokes out there who've got tools they're not using in their sheds. And a lot of them um, are only too happy to see them being used, especially, you know, for such a um, noble purpose as building guitars out of. People are only too happy to see their tools being used for things like that. So um, don't let it put you off if you think you, you're never going to be able to afford to buy all the tools. Um, I, will, I also show you on the course, on the, on the website, I have full courses where you start with a blank piece of paper and you design and build the whole thing. Um, and I usually show you um, several ways to do each job um, with different levels of um, budget, let's say. So don't let that put you off. So um, and I was, sorry, I was going to say, um, before I forget, um, there's also a thing called a safety planer, which goes in your pedestal drill. This thing on the rear. It goes in your pedestal drill here and um, turns your drill into a planer, kind of. Um, safety planer. So look that up. Um, if you've got a pedestal drill, then you can use that um, to, to thickness your pieces of wood. Personally, I, I don't really like it um, because it puts nasty loads on your pedestal drill. Um, really, a, a drill is made to push down, push up. A drill is made to, for the stress to act this way. As soon as you put, put putting stress on side load stress, and you start putting um, wear into your um, into your pedestal drill that um, it's not really made for. They're not really made to take a side load. So I prefer to use um, a proper planer, and I don't use the safety planer. But it is available, um, and it just goes to show that you know you just use what you've got. And if you've got one, and you need to do the job. And that's the tool for the job, isn't it? So it's something you might want to look out for is a safety planer. Safety planer. Okay, so I'm going to put um, I'm going to put Roland's neck blank out of the way to dry. And uh, don't go away, Roland, because I've got something else for you. <laughs> Let's put this out of the way because I want to show you some inlays that I've been working on. And then you can tell me what you want. Um, laminates, Go on then. Um, uh, Pete said, uh, are there, uh, what are your favourite woods? Have you got any favourite woods for laminating? Is there any... It's not laminate, yeah. Yeah, I don't really have favourite woods, do I? I love mahogany. But most laminated necks tend to be maple. Don't they? Um, don't really have a major preference. We, we sometimes recommend for bases, don't we? Yeah, another advantage of laminates is um, the more highly figured your piece of wood, 
the less stable it tends to be. So laminating means you can use the really exotic, high-end, highly figured stuff without worrying about it um, warping and twisting and changing shape. So that's another good reason to laminate. So um, let's have a look at these inlays then, Roland. What we got? See if we can get a bit more light on them. Right, so Roland specified to have some custom inlays. And he wanted them, they're going to be made from tubing with a wooden centre. So um, I'm actually going to make these uh, coming up very soon is going to be the inlay course. I've got a full inlay course which is almost finished. Uh, so we started with the basics design and build courses. Now we've got them covered. Now we can start adding to it. And um, there's some amazing stuff coming. One of them is I want to show you how we make these inlays. So um, you'll need to be a premium member to get the full inlay course. But I did do a live stream on that. So um, there is a free film out there if you look at search the channel. But inlays, yes, full inlay course coming up. Um, and this is going to be a little bonus part of that. So um, these are nice ones, aren't they? Cocobola. Let's see if we can get a better, better light, so, better um, shot. So Roland's saying um, he, he'd be really interested in people's feedback and input. Yeah. Um, All right, so here's my thoughts, Roland. Um, originally, we were going to go for copper tubing and um, green heart centre or walnut centre. So I've done both here. Um, well, here's my thoughts, right, is that the copper, the copper can disappear into the wood because it's the same colour as the wood, if you see what I mean. In certain conditions, you can't actually see the copper very well. I'm going to try this other camera as well. Try this one. Here we go. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it really depends on the light, doesn't it? But um, here's some examples. I did some test pieces to show you. Um, what I found is that the copper it depends on the light, and I can't really show you too well by the look of it. I'll maybe move this light around and see if you can see. They all look nice, eh? But I think the copper ones, because it's the same colour, they can disappear. So, I kind of like these ones. So this one is satin wood centre, so it's the same wood as this for the centre but an aluminium tubing. Oh, where's it gone? This one here. These are the ones I'd go for, I think. They do look lovely though. This one. So, satin wood centre, aluminium outer. But these are nice as well. This is Cocobola, that one with copper and um, satin wood and copper this one that's nice as well I like the way I like the ones that match the wood but then also the ones that are darker as well they really stand out what are those dark ones? So these dark ones are that's the green heart believe it or not I'm going to take you off Mark just for a minute right so the, these dark ones here are the green heart Roland. Um, this one here is satin wood. Satin wood, green heart. 
Okay. These, these are just some random ones that I made to Can show you. Put the aluminium ones nearer because they're all at the moment enjoying the aluminium. Yeah. Where do you want to put them? I don't know. Just saying that that's the aluminium that they're all. Yeah. They certainly stand out the most, don't they? So we don't have to decide today, but um, we could use any colour tubing. I've got, I've got uh, this aluminium. That's Carol's wind chime, don't tell her. <gasps> oh! <laughs> and I've got some copper. And they're available in different sizes. Six mil. Yeah, aluminium seems to be the... That's uh, seven mil actually. I, mean, I think this is six mil. Carol's wind chime. <laughs> So we've got Carol's wind chime with <laughs> matching satin wood. That's what everybody's voting. I have nothing there. <laughs> right, they're all going for aluminium and green heart at the moment, everybody. Although uh, Clinton likes the green heart and coca bola. Yeah. He likes the coca bola one and the green heart. Yeah. They're all actually liking the aluminium better. Yeah, the aluminium stands out more, doesn't it? Depends on the angle of the light, you see. And so does Roland. So, um, <clears throat> so Superclump has asked, how do you put the wood in the in the hole? Oh, well, that would be telling, wouldn't it? Right. So is that? Is <laughs> that's that for another, another video. That's another video. Yeah. yeah sorry. Yeah. Who was that? That was uh, Clint over in. Sorry, Clint. So it's five to sorry, two. guys. It's I, five I, to I, two. <laughs> it's nearly the end of the lunch hour, Mark. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I turn into a pumpkin at two o'clock, so there isn't time to show you that on this stream, but I just wanted to show you that because that's one of the things coming up. I am going to show you how to do that, but not today. <laughs> it's a teaser. It means you have to subscribe or become a premium member. Yeah, if you really want to help us out, it is actually um, our premium members who, who are keeping us off the streets at the moment. What with the current um, climate, with the chaos going on, um, it's really, it's our pretty much our only source of income at the moment. Well, so. I've got some other, I've got some other messages, right? Well, if you want to see me starve, um, <laughs> stop becoming a premium member. But if you want more videos like this, then head over to guitarmaking.co.uk, become a premium member, or you can become a supporter. Um, but if you want the full courses, you need to become a premium member. And if you want more like this, but better, that's what yeah. You're so <laughs> the idea is, is that. Um, on the on the website on the guitar making academy all the videos are edited <laughs> so you haven't got to listen to me waffling on about a load of rubbish um, they're properly edited professionally edited lessons it's a step-by-step -step guide to building your own guitar and um, once you've done it once then the world's your oyster and you can make 10 you can make um, all sorts of different customizations do what you want Right. What I'm trying to get across is the basic techniques. Um, once you've got them cracked, then you can do whatever you want. Right, so you've got a couple more things, right? Yeah, a couple okay. more things, and then we've got some more, uh, some brief news items to That's get cool, through. Because we're almost at the end of our lunch hour. Right, before we so, finish, so let's do um, as that, rapid fire. Bish bosh. I've lost his, I've lost the rest of the name, but Asad, um, he's asked, do you, can you laminate with aluminium or brass? Can you laminate a neck? Oh, hold on, where are we going? Can you laminate a neck with metal, basically, with some metal? I'm trying to think if I've ever seen it done. I've never seen it done. I've never seen it done. Um, I might get pinstripes, might you all? Problem is, right, it's okay for this kind of like uh, inlay kind of stuff, where I'm just gluing an inlay into a hole. There's no structural... Uh, strength needed um, but if you're laminating a neck it needs to be strong um, and one problem that you do have when you're gluing two different things together like plastic to wood or wood to metal anything that's not different um, anything that's not the same then um, obviously glues are made for certain materials so wood glue won't work on metal so you'd have to use a special kind of glue. Um, 
off the top of my head I would imagine that epoxy would probably work um, but it's not recommended um, another reason you might not want to do it is because wood and metal will expand at different rates mm. and that will eventually just crack the joint open so that's probably the main reason that I've not seen it done um, so that, certainly that, that not was a Zad, Zagami. I didn't good question that. though brilliant question I would love to see it done but uh, I don't think I'd want to put my name on it in case it fell apart. That's always a problem, isn't it? With experimental yeah. Stuff. That's the problem with experimental stuff, yes. Okay, um, so other quick question. Uh, uh, um, well, yeah, we'll come back to that. So you've had several warm and friendly and lovely feelings about your... Thanks, about guys. So you, you need to set up a knife, knife um, chisel and rasp lovers association because... They're, they're, you're getting some love for those. Oh good, I'm glad you're enjoying the tools. Um, so if you don't know what we're talking about, we, um, we do make some of our own tools, including the guitar maker's knife, and, or, or also known as a skew chisel, and, uh, and a guitar maker's chisel, curved chisel, great for carving the braces. So yeah, I'm glad you're enjoying them, folks, um, that's good to know. Um, can I just say Matt? Homeowners put a thing on that you, you could, but you would need to use epoxy. Yeah, that's what I, I suggested that epoxy would probably work, um, but I wouldn't recommend it for the reasons that I said. Yeah, so what do you think of this, guys? New aprons, new merch. Yeah, so another way to support us is to head over to the site and <laughs> buy something. We've got black ones. We've got olive ones and we've got khaki oh, ones. What's the difference? So if you want to hide in the bushes, I reckon this one. This one, this one's for hiding in the bushes. This one's for working at night. And this one's for um, the desert. What's, what's the main difference between <laughs> the one that you've got on, Mark? Okay, so these, this one hasn't got a pocket. So we now have aprons with and without pockets. <laughs> Otherwise known as the everyday apron. <laughs> Modelled by Lewis on the website. Oh yeah. I think I've got a... There he is. <laughs> There's our Lewis modelling the uh, aprons. So Lewis is... Um, you, you guys have probably heard me talk about him before. He's, he's kind of like my apprentice, but he's actually more than that. We kind of work together now. Um, more, more on Lewis coming up as well in the coming weeks because guess what finishing course <laughs> finishing course folks right what I realised was we've already done most of it um, on the courses we've already got oiled finish and matte finish so all I need to do is add on uh, a few extras to get the gloss the full gloss which will be top coating and polishing and then we're going to do a whole um, section on colour so we've got staining, double staining, bursting and that will be the basics of what I think is a fantastic course and I'm really excited about it we're going to be covering, um, obviously doing it with a spray can and also I'll be showing you my my large compressor I'll be showing that off <laughs> and the proper spray guns and all that for those of you that have got that kind of equipment but for those that haven't I'm also going to be showing you how we do it with a, just an aerosol available from anywhere so yeah finishing course coming up um, so Carol's been poking a sharp stick at me and we've been trying to get it all scheduled in we've got a whole massive list of stuff which I was going to read out and I forgot to print off but um, we've got many 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 exciting and interesting stuff planned for you loads of stuff well, um, Super Clunk said I, will you be covering lacquers and dyes yes stains and colours that will all be covered and lacquers different types of lacquer and all that kind of thing um, yeah loads of amazing stuff coming up what I'm going to try and do is answer your questions as fast as possible. So I've got a load of stuff planned 
but I don't want to do it in the order I want to do it. I want to do it in the order that you guys ask me for, all right? So that's what we're going to try and do. So um, if there's anything that I haven't covered in this session or in any of the other sessions that you'll see if you go through the website and the YouTube channel, um, yeah, if there's anything that I haven't covered yet, make sure to leave a comment um, asking me, um, Mark, what about this? And then we can schedule it in. Because <laughs> I'm really good at scheduling, I know, Carol. Tumbleweed, tumbleweed, right. So, um, Mark. So, yeah, that's the plan. Right. What I've got is I've got a massive wall of ideas, massive wall of ideas, um, which have all come from your questions. Every one of them is one of your questions. Um, and we're going to be covering them as fast as possible uh, so that I can answer your questions as fast as possible, basically. How that's what weeks, it's all about. How many weeks of workshops have we got potentially, Mark? How many weeks of workshops? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Fourteen! Right, we've got fourteen weeks worth. <laughs> so that's what we were doing in the last two weeks we had off. Right, so Mark... Right, Mark, what else? Well, are we at the end? Is yeah, I'm gagging for a right, cup of tea. Well, wait a minute, right, so earlier on, right at the beginning, Robin Gosman came online. Um, he Robin! Here, he's in the house, right? Oh, he yeah. said that he had a puncture today. He was late. He was late for the session because he had a puncture, right? He was taking what, on his all, bike. No, on his in his in his on his trailer. He was taking all the rubbish out of his garage or out of his shed so that he can make more room for making guitars. Clearing the space. But That's what I like to hear. He managed to get back. Oh. But he, 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 he Nothing made, worthwhile is ever easy, Robin. No, and he 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 said that he had a problem with the the bit of wood under the caravan. Found. Right. It walked a bit. Right. So he he poured boiling water over it, put it in a plastic bag, a bin liner, and mm. let the Scottish sunshine do the rest. He said. All right. Did that work? Apparently so. so. I said, well, we'll see what Mark's face looks like when. So do you yeah, recommend that? I don't recommend that, no. <laughs> um. I need to look into <laughs> Right, so I've got three aprons on now. The Robin Goodman mark? Yeah, so uh, if you line up the little film, I was going to tell you, you'll have to push me in. Press push first. Right, hold on. Push me in. Are you ready? Push me yeah. in. So we were recently visited by one of our uh, members, students, uh, yeah. Robin, who came to collect his, um, his build your own electric guitar kit. A very from the best guitar making website on the planet so there he is with his kit in the background and there what he's holding there is um, a guitar that he's working on um, this is the bit of wood that he found under the caravan I think and can you just pause it Carol right so he hasn't done his pickup routes there I want you to notice how cleverly he's marked out his bit of wood so that um, when he does his pickup route, it's going to take out those screw holes. So this piece of wood for the top was reclaimed. He found it under his caravan. <laughs> I think. And uh, he managed to avoid the three screw holes by cleverly putting it under the pickup route there. And he did tell me, notice that the F holes are slightly unusual shape. He did tell me that um, he had carefully arranged another screw hole to come out in the F holes, but he missed slightly. <laughs> so he's reshaped his F holes. Yeah, but I think I think I they it. look they look great, don't they? Yeah. So that is one of the things that we like to do is if something doesn't work out as quite as intended, or if you make a little mistake or a boo boo, we only have we have happy accidents, don't we? That's Marcel about that. Remember Marcel? We only have happy accidents. <laughs> a la Bob Ross style oh. and so what he decided to do was reshape his F holes slightly and I think he's done a really good job there mm. of Excellent. hiding what once went wrong and you would never even know would you you'd think that that's how it's supposed to be so when he's done his pickup route and his neck route it's going to look perfect isn't it and there's just one little thing I wanted to point out about this if you play it a bit more Carol um, is he's very cleverly recessed his um, 
his three-way toggle switch there. Um, now, it looks really cool when you do this, but um, I don't recommend it. Reason being, um, Robin, you might not thank yourself when you come to spray in your guitar. <laughs> it does make finishing the guitar a little bit more complicated because what will happen is the finish will pull in those little recesses and you will have to do something to clean them up. Uh, you could maybe get a little rotary file on a Dremel if it's really bad. Um, if you just do an oil finish, not a problem. If you, if you manage to pull off a very thin lacquered finish, not a problem. But this kind of thing, it can cause problems. Um, looks beautiful though, eh? So fingers crossed for you, Robin. Um, like I say, if you do have trouble, let me know. You could use like a miniature router, like a miniature Dremel um, with a rotary file to just clean up that um, once you've sprayed it so that the plate fits back in again. But like I say, nice work. Nice work. Well done. There you go. Thanks, Carol. Thanks for that. And thanks to Robin. And you can see in the background there, those two boxes are his next guitar <laughs> in kit form. So um, with that, I do believe, I think we're done. I, I think we've covered everything, folks. Um, covered actually a little bit more than I intended to. Um, if you want to know more about how we do these dots or how we build guitars in general, then head over to the, um, the guitar making site. Um, especially big thanks to Roland for letting us use his guitar for the live stream. And um, with a bit of luck, we'll be seeing a bit more of it in the coming weeks. Um, it won't be too long before we're spraying it. And I think I'm going to feature it as part of the finishing course. So, lots of exciting stuff happening. Um, if there's anything you found interesting or useful, then please subscribe and like and share, because I know you've heard all this before, but it really does make a big difference to um, us YouTubers. Well, and quite a lot of people saying it's great to have us back. Edge of Cameron saying thanks. Yeah, for it's good to be back, and folks. It really helps. It is actually, isn't it? Yeah, it is. We, we missed you. Missed we missed you. And so we'll be back on uh, 1 p.m. Saturday. And um, all things being well, we'll be here every Wednesday and Saturday at 1 p.m. Forever. <laughs> until hell freezes over. <laughs> <laughs> until they create a new vaccine or something <laughs> yeah we're not going to do politics so um this is your safe place to come and avoid the chaos from the rest of the world so cheers folks um like share subscribe and all that stuff and i'll see you in the next one most important thing check twice cut once cheers folks <laughs>